Hi everybody, this is part 14 of our UML tutorial series, Deployment Diagram. So if you're ready, let's get started. Deployment Diagram shows how software and hardware work together. Generally, every project has some business requirements and budget. An efficient deployment diagram should meet these types of requirements and be designed in a cost-effective way. So that's why deployment diagram is useful. It can, for example, help us to see what kind of server do we need for our project. So here is an example of a di deployment diagram. And uh, we will take a look at these examples in more details. Here are some nodes and uh, the communication between nodes and etc. But first, let's see for whom a deployment diagram is. System designers, developers, and system engineers. What is its purpose? Describe runtime processing nodes and the model hardware details for a client server system. Important elements, nodes, obviously, which actually is anything that we consider as an hardware or an executable environment. For example, computer, server, hardware, router, firewall, etc. Now, what points we need to consider? When nodes are actually software, uh, let me mention that uh, in most of the times nodes are hardware, but there are actually times that uh, we are referring to some softwares as nodes. So, in this case, we may specify those nodes uh, by stereotypes, such as execution environment, for example, server or database, for example, MySQL 5.5 or any version of it, schema, and artifact. And by artifact, I guess that I have explained to you, but anyway, uh, artifacts can be any type of file, such as txt, xml, exe, etc. Now, the next point that we need to consider while drawing the deployment diagrams is that when showing, for example, some artifact uh, inside of a device, like a PC or server, we should consider to show only important artifacts that are actually useful for our system designers and developers to consider in the deployment diagram. So, uh, as we know, uh, in a real world uh, software system, of course, there are lots of artifacts that should be used so that that software system can work properly. But in our deployment diagram, we should consider only the important ones that are actually can be useful for our system designers and developers and so that we prevent unnecessary complex and unnecessary uh, artifacts uh, drawings. Now let's take a look at uh, a term which we call it execution environment. What is this stereotype about? It's where uh, our software and codes are going to be executed in a device. So that's what we call an uh, execution environment. Imagine the following example, for example. We draw a device like a smartphone and inside of it we draw another node as execution environment and yes inside of it we can also mention an artifact which implements a component and by component i mean uh, the component actually here makes sure that our software which is coming into the device fits the requirements of the device and it can do what it's supposed to do so that's uh, uh, what we call uh, execution environment now, what do we mean by deployment spec? What is it about actually? It's a special artifact that specifies how another artifact is deployed to a node. It provides information that allows another artifact to run successfully in its environment. It often has some properties like which class should be executed in the execution environment and which methods of the class can be called. For example, a configuration file can be the deployment spec. A configuration file which its parameters should be defined before the software can be executed. Now, what are the steps to draw the deployment diagram? 
we start drawing from the first device that our software is going to be executed inside of it then continue and draw any other environments and databases that the device communicates with to run our software successfully now let's go all the way up here and take a look at our examples in this example over here we have actually two nodes the first one is referring to a hardware node the second one is referring to a software which is our mysql database and in this example we're demonstrating different ways to show that an artifact is, is deployed to the node we can uh, just write its name or we can also draw it uh, uh, as a notation now let's take a look at this example over here and that is how we show the properties of a deployment specification or deployment spec stereotype like a configuration file that we have explained earlier so the notation on the right shows an instance populated with values so if we like to show the actual property values instead of just the types we can use the right notation so as you can see this is a deployment specification is the instance of this deployment specification so uh, here we add the actually uh, attributes uh, uh, we mention them with their type so for example class name its type is a string and allowed methods its type is array but here properties are with their actual values for example class name value is uh, as an example name and the allowed methods is an a real array and that's why because this deployment specification is the instance of this one that's why we have underlined its name to specify that it's a uh, populated instance now let's take a look at an other example in this example, we're demonstrating a mobile application installed on our smartphone. So this is our smartphone device. And this is our server with the MySQL database. And this smartphone device is communicating with the server via the TCP IP. In this smartphone device, here is our execution environment, which is where our codes are going to be executed. And one of our important artifacts, which is chat.js file, implements the phone info component. The phone info component makes sure that our software uh, actually meets the smartphone device requirements. And here, we have our deployment specification file which is the config.js file and uh, it actually specifies how the conversation.js file is going to be deployed on the smartphone device so that's all there is to the deployment diagram i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i will see you in the next uh, part of the uml tutorial series Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified of our upcoming tutorials. So, see you in the next part.